We were in the process of taking down a spinnaker, uh, and Sean was moving forward along with a couple members of the crew on the starboard rail. And it was a pretty unsettled sea state in the wake of some of the squalls that have been going through. And whether it was boat motion or a gust of wind or what have you, he wound up going over the side. Happened in the blink of an eye. You, know, you spend a lot of time training for man overboard situations before you go offshore racing. Uh, but nothing can quite prepare you for that moment where you actually see it happen. Sean hit the water, uh, his vest inflated, uh, and he was able to activate both the strobe and the MOB within seconds, uh, which put us in a position to keep an eye on him the entire process. So our navigator uh, went down below and immediately hailed both the Coast Guard and surrounding vessels, letting them know we had a man overboard. We also have a single button uh, man overboard system, which immediately gave information on Sean's location uh, and distance and bearing. We got the sail down, we got the lines out of the water, we started our diesel and we motored back upwind. I popped up on their uh, system, on the AIS, and immediately he saw he was within the vicinity and he hit accept, a button hit, he pushed. So the bearing for the race course now switched to me where I was in the water. And so they knew exactly what their heading was. The beacons uh, off of Sean's vest, AIS, DSC beacons all started coming into our, our system, into our instrument system. So pretty quickly we had range and bearing on Sean and knew exactly where he was and uh, got our boat under control, got, got all the sails down and uh, motored slowly towards them. But the reality is as soon as you touch the water and you're, you inflate, right, you check to make sure that you're okay right? And as soon as you're okay, then you just breathe normally. It's all about being calm. It was hard not to see them, and that, that was really important. Yeah. I think we were probably, you know, over a mile out from them, you could see them. He was lit up like a Christmas tree. Everyone did an extremely important role and, uh, and knew exactly what to do. You know, who's a spotter, who's operating the life sign, who's operating the searchlight, who's communicating, who's driving the boat. You know, we have our best helmsman, Mike Smith on the helm. You know, I could see a bow light coming at me, lined up with a, a mast headlight. So I knew that they were on me, coming towards me. And then they had a floodlight on the bow. And as they were getting closer, I asked within like 50 feet, just move the floodlight so I can see the vessel, so I can make sure I can maneuver around the vessel. And to my surprise, it was not my boat. <laughs> and he's just set up, you know, just to weather of him and we're far enough away, stop the boat, all in neutral throw the life sling and pull them, pull them up on the transom. And Mark Struby and Mary grabbed them and just heaved them up on the transom. <laughs> I think it's important for people not to kid themselves. This is not somebody who was out for a cruise on Lake Michigan. Um, he's a veteran offshore ocean sailor and uh, this can happen to anybody in the blink of an eye. Which, for those of you who have kind of gone downwind in a hurry in the dark, you know that it, it's, it's pretty shocking how quickly they get small in the rearview mirror. There wasn't even a question about getting back up wind to him in time. Madcap was on the scene probably 10 minutes later, and we were in comms with them the entire way. I'm the person in charge. I'm also the navigator on board. And I, I park myself in the nav station, and um, I, I don't like to sail the boat like that all the time, but I think in an emergency, in, in windy conditions, having somebody there listening to these communications, it's important to have that designated person on board. If you're racing offshore, if it's at night, you need to have devices on you so other boats can see you. You need to have a light system. And that was the surprising thing on the boat. Like, it wasn't all at once. Over the course of the next, like, 18 hours, everybody asked me, what was that stroke? They said that thing was so powerful. There's a reason, I think, that offshore sailors get along with one another um, pretty much from the get-go. And that's because when you go to sea, you're putting your trust not only in your crewmates, but all the people that you're racing with. Because just given the dynamics of yacht racing, it's highly likely the first boat to you isn't the one that you fell off. And um, having that trust, not just that they're going to come get you, um, that they're going to drop out of the race, potentially, to go do that, none of that is what the Madcap crew were thinking about. They were thinking about uh, very quickly and very calmly uh, getting their sails down, getting their engine on, and getting to Sean. Um, so you can't thank somebody enough for something like that. Um, but it is, uh, it's one of those things that's very heartwarming about the sport and I think separates it from other sports in that this really is a big family out there when you're on the water together because there's no one else to help you in the dark.